ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارham ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدى هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الامور محدثاتها وكل محدثه بدعه وكل بدعه ضلاله وكل ضلاله في النار indeed the best speech the speech of allah azza wa jal and the best guidance is the guidance of muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the most evil of matters are the newly invented matters in the religion either be an action or speech and or belief or methodology and all innovations are misguidance and all misguidance leads to the hellfire and we continuing explanation of al qawaid al arba the four principles of the four rules the four fundamental basic guiding truths that will guide a person i need to understand the difference between tawhid and shirk between a monotheist and a polytheist last time when we looked at the first principle and the first principle al qaidatu al ula which was an ta'lama anna al kuffar alladhina qatalahum rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam مقرون بان الله تعالى هو الخالق والرازق والمدبر وان ذلك لم يدخلهم في الاسلام the first principle that the sheikh and the author put in his book for a person to understand the difference between shirk and tawhid and the first issue the first principle that will guide a person and the first step he must take is to understand and this issue the first one which is that you know that the disbelievers that whom the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam fought against that they used to believe and agree and acknowledge that allah is the creator the sustainer and the controller for all of the affairs of the creations wa anna dhalika lam yudkhilhum fil islam and that belief that they held that did not enter them into the fold of islam we looked at that and in this principle and the last time we were here and this is very important and a person must ponder and keep this in mind and when we move on to the next and the principle so know that the polytheists the pagan arabs in the time of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam their belief regarding allah was that he was the creator the only creator him alone the sustainer and the control of all of the affairs of his creation so they believed in the lordship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they affirmed the lordship of allah azza wa jal they never used to believe that their false deities and their false deities that they worship besides allah they didn't used to believe that they could create or that they could sustain them or bring them good or repel harm from them they used to affirm this belief for only allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yet they used to worship deities besides allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so we must know and their their belief regarding this so they affirmed only one aspect of tawhid but then they opposed and negated the other aspects of tawhid so they believed in the lordship of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but then they opposed another great and important part of tawhid which is to direct all of your actions of worship to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone 
This is what they opposed and they negated. And because of this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declared them as polytheists, mushrikeen. This is the way the Quran and it describes them. Even though they affirmed that Allah is the creator, the sustainer, and the control of all of the affairs of his creations, even though they affirmed that and they agreed to that, but they were declared as mushrikeen, polytheists, because they worshipped others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They had many false deities that they worshipped. And that belief that they held did not enter them into the fall of Islam. But the Prophet ﷺ called them to Tawheed to affirm that part that they negated. And he fought against them. So, it's not permissible for us to declare them as Muslims. And it is not allowed for us to declare that a person who believes that Allah is the creator, the sustainer, then that makes him a Muslim. It was not the case. It was not the case for those pagan Arabs. It is not the case for anyone at this present time. So Tawheed al rububiyyah the Tawheed of Allah's Lordship, is not enough to enter a person into Islam. It is not enough to free a person from shirk. As some believe that shirk is only if you believe that Allah is the creator and he has another partner, another cre- other creator, and he, which helps him. This is not the only. This is not the only aspect of shirk. Some people and he do believe that. But how do we gain this correct belief? To know the truth within the falsehood, we go back to the kitab and the sunnah to clarify these matters for us. This is the first point. We need to affirm that those. Polytheists, those pagan Arabs, they used to believe that Allah Azzawajal is their creator, their sustainer, and controller of all of the affairs. But then they worshipped false deities besides Allah. They worshipped Lat, Uzza, and Manat. They worshipped them besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and Allah Azzawajal declared them as polytheists and the mushrikeen. So Tawheed Abu Bubiya is not enough. So we cannot say based on this that Tawheed is to affirm that Allah is the creator. That is not sufficient. And we cannot claim that if a person says, I believe in Allah, but then he turns to the graves and worships that, we can't say that that person is a monotheist because his actions is contrary to that statement. So a person needs to understand this point first and keep that in mind and before we move on to the second and the point. So a way to understand any major shirk is that when somebody makes something or someone equal to Allah in a matter that is specific and unique only, only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When somebody makes a person or something he makes that person as an equal to Allah regarding a matter that is specifically only specific, it's unique only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is, I need to help you to understand what shirk is. And it was a major shirk. So the second rule states, أَنَّهُمْ يَقُولُونَ مَا دَعَوْنَاهُمْ وَتَوَجَّهْنَا إِلَيْهِمْ إِلَّا لِتَرَبِ الْقُرْبَةِ وَالشَّفَاعَةِ they said, those polytheists, those pagan Arabs, they said, we do not turn to them. We do not supplicate to them and call upon them and invoke them and turn to them, except in seeking that they should bring us closer to Allah and that they will intercede for us before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Very important part. This is their claim. And in the second point, it informs you about the state of those pagan Arabs regarding the actions of worship. The first point clarified their state regarding Tawheed. The first point clarified the state of those pagan Arabs regarding Tawheed. Which Tawheed, which part of Tawheed they affirmed and which part of Tawheed they negated. And the second rule, the second principle clarifies their state regarding their worship, their claim, and their arguments. Why did they, why did they worship 
those false deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they said that we do not supplicate to them and that we do not turn to them except said except that they should bring us closer to Allah and that they will intercede for us before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So they did, they did not believe that their false deities could create or could possess the abilities like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could possess and he, the ability to benefit them or to repel harm from them. The Yon used to believe that. They didn't take them as independent deities that could create or could help them independently. They only took them as deities to bring them closer to Allah and also to intercede for them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To intercede for them, what it means? They used to turn to them and make requests to those false deities and ask them to raise those requests to Allah. This is what it means to intercede. He took them as intercessors. So they worship their false deities, making requests and their needs, what they want, so that those deities, they believe that those deities will go then and bring those requests to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah will not reject those requests. This is what they believed. Instead of going straight to Allah Azza wa Jal, instead of directing their worship to Allah and supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they turn to those false deities. Now those false deities generally were mainly or represented pious people who had pious, passed away. Pious, righteous people who passed away. And they believed that those people and all their souls had a strong standing before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They thought that those people when they passed away and their souls, because they were close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they have a strong standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This was their, their ghulu. This is extreme in their belief about those souls. This was their cause of them falling into that form of shirk. Because they thought because those people were righteous, they had many good actions and deeds while they were alive. They were good people, trustworthy, had many good deeds and actions. When they passed away, they exceeded those beliefs and believed that those souls of those people, those de- deceased, were able to communicate their requests and needs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they had this special standing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they believed. This is what they turned, why they turned to them. Now this form of polytheism, when did it start? And you look back, it started with the people of Nuh, alayhi salam. The people of Nuh, we know them as the first generation to worship the deceased, the dead, pious people. This is and where they start. This is where the, that form of polytheism started. When the righteous passed away amongst them, then later on they will create statues in memory of them, and then they will lead them, and he, this will lead them to worshipping them because, because they were so righteous, then they have a special connection with Allah, and because they are not as special as them, then they directed their worship to them, supplicating to them, and asking them to raise their requests to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So those pagan Arabs inherited that form of polytheism, that form of polytheism, and it reached them. This is what and they, they did. So these two things you need to keep in mind, that they did not worship those false idols except to bring them closer to Allah <coughs> and to intercede for them before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you know, and the, the author, when he brings a statement, he brings evidence. This is the tarbiyah, and he will go back to the evidences from the Quran and the Sunnah. We state, and he will bring evidence. 
And he said in his treaties, and after this he said, فَالدَّلِيلُ قُرْبَةِ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاءَ مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَحْكُمُ بَيْنَهُمْ فِيمَا هُمْ فِيهِ مُخْتَلِفُونَ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِ مَنْ هُوَ كَاذِبٌ كَفَّارٌ He brings the evidence, he says, the evidence that they worship them to seek nearness, closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He brings a verse in the Quran that Allah mentions that that was their claim. وَالَّذِينَ اتَّخَذُوا مِن دُونِهِ أَوْلِيَاء And those who took besides Allah, awliya, protectors, helpers, deities, gods, and besides Allah, they say, مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى They said, we do not worship them except that they may bring us closer to Allah. This was their argument. This was their claim, their belief. مَا نَعْبُدُهُمْ إِلَّا لِيُقَرِّبُونَ إِلَى اللَّهِ زُلْفَى We do not worship them except that they may, or that they should bring us closer to Subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what? And it was one of their arguments. And this, was this argument correct? Was it true? Was it something that had a basis? Did Allah Azza wa Jal agree with their, with their argument? Allah mentions, and in this verse, He says, "Inna Allah yahkumu bainahum fi ma hum fihi muhtalifun." Allah will judge between them regarding that, and in which they used to differ. Inna Allah la yahdi man huwa kathibun kafar. Indeed, Allah does not guide those, and you are one or he who is a liar and a disbeliever. So they made that statement: "Ma na'buduhum illa liyuqarribuna ila Allahi zulfa." We do not worship them except that they should bring us closer to Allah. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala declare them as liars and as disbelievers. That statement that they brought, that was falsehood. That was a big lie. It's not correct. It's invalid. And he declared them as disbelievers. So their claim was a lie. Their claim that they worship them to bring them closer to Allah, that was a lie because that does not work and at all, it's invalid. And declare them as disbelievers because of their actions of worship. They directed their actions of worship to others besides Allah, and they disbelieved. And they fell into major shirk. They fell into major shirk. So in this verse, there's a limitation, a restriction, which makes you understand that they did not worship them because they thought they could create. They did not worship them because they thought they could provide for them or control their affairs. They did not believe that regarding their false deities. Say, We do not worship them except that they may bring us closer to Allah. So they did not believe that they were creators besides Allah or could provide for them besides Allah or repel, repel harm from them along with Allah. So these claims of those pagan Arabs you find present today, even amongst those who ascribe themselves to Islam. Those same excuses, those same arguments are present today. They say we do not turn to those graves. Our pious you know, brother, our pious sheikh who passed away, do not turn to them you know, because we believe that he creates or what, whatever. And we turn to him because he was pious. So we, we turn to, them, to him with supplication so that he will raise our supplication to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we say this claim is falsehood. This is, was the same claim and argument of those pagan Arabs in the time of the Prophet and they were declared as disbelievers, liars, for those statements and those actions of worship, of turning to those in the graves and supplicating to them. Is it totally a falsehood? Same thing. Well, the same arguments they made then, and the same arguments some of the polytheists and he make today. 
one thing also to to point out is that they did not negate that they worshipped them. They said, ma ma na'buduhum. We do not worship them, they said. So they they knew that their actions were actions of worship. Turning to those in the grave, supplicating to them, sacrificing you know, an animal on their behalf for them, and offer a sacrificial animal for them. All of these things, they agreed that these was, were actions of worship. Whereas now, nowadays, some people just claim, we are not worshipping them, this is not worship. We are just showing respect. This is what some people who ascribe their, themselves to Islam, they turn to the graves. Same issue. Supplicating to them because they, they believe that they were righteous and then they have a strong standing with Allah Azza wa Jal and they can raise their request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they're making any of those claims and those, those arguments. But what some of them try to, to say nowadays, they say this is not worship. We are not worshipping them. We are just showing respect. And bowing down to a grave and supplicating to them to ask them their needs for them that is respect. But then we see that those things were present in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, same arguments, and they were declared as liars. And a falsehood, this is totally falsehood. Even if they give it another name. And nowadays people will give it another name. This is only showing respect. Then the reality is the reality. And shirk is shirk. Even if you clothe it with something else, the reality is the reality. You don't look at what you call it. And you look at that matter itself, what it is. This way, and we need the correct understanding and the correct and Islamic education and turning back to the Quran and the Sunnah to make clear any of these affairs. So this indeed and is not any the way of Al Islam to turn to false deities, to supplicate to them. To ask them to raise your request to Allah, this is not the way of Al-Islam. I and mean, this is shirk. This opposes the basic and fundamental I mean, principles of Islam. This opposes the da'wah, the call of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This opposes la ilaha illallah. That there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person must turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and intend the actions of worship for him alone. Ask Allah Azza wa Jal to not turn to the graves, to not turn and to false deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what was, what was their cause? I mean, the cause of them falling into that form of shirk. It was because they went to an extreme regarding their beliefs and regarding those people, their souls, regarding those spirituality of those souls. So they believed that because they were so pious, had many good actions and deeds in the dunya that they had, they were close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they believed that when those people passed away, that they could ask them to raise their needs to Allah, and those souls would raise their needs to Allah, and they believed that Allah would not reject the request of those righteous people and because they were close to Allah, that they had a strong standing and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is totally false. And the falsehood, shirk. We do not find that belief in the Quran and the Sunnah and it affirmed anywhere. But the evidences opposes that belief that they held. And even today, and you find the, these accusations, these beliefs, these arguments amongst some of the people who ascribe themselves to Al-Islam. Then the evidence that the author brought for the argument or their claim that they do not worship them except that they will intercede on their behalf before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, what dalilu shafa'ah and the evidence that they worship them 
to, and to take them as intercessors before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is and they said, Allah mentions regarding their claim that they said, said and they worship besides Allah. That which does not bring any harm to them, that which cannot bring any harm any to them. And that which does not benefit them, cannot bring any benefit to them. And they say, And they say, These are our intercessors before Allah. These are our intercessors before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what they said. So these two evidences for the statement of the author that he brought. That the belief of those pagan Arabs, when they worship their, and their false deities, they said, we do not worship them except that they bring us closer to Allah. And then they said, and these are our intercessors before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is what they believed regarding those false deities. This is what they believe. This is what they believed. And Allah azza wa jal declared them as disbelievers. Disbelievers, any mushrikeen, polytheist, for those beliefs and their actions that they that they did. Now the meaning of intercession. Now, in the worldly affairs, a person can intercede for somebody else, and while they, whilst they're still alive. For example, a person, for example, he wants a job, and his friend knows the owner of that business. For example, he goes to his friend. And because he knows his friend is probably a family member of, of the owner of the business. And he goes to him and says, you know, can you help me you know, to get that job? Can you speak to the owner for me? That is interceding. That is in the worldly life. That's, that's okay. Get a person and to intercede or to speak to somebody on your behalf so that and you can get what you want. That is permissible. That is okay as long as... And what you're searching for, what you want, and it is, is permissible, is halal. But regarding those who have passed away, that is not permissible. They were creation themselves, weak, needing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if they passed away, halas, and if they've gone to the next life, they cannot hear you, they cannot bring your request to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Supplicating to them and asking them for these needs is shirk. Is worshipping them. Even if people will say, no, it's not worship. We're only asking them. We're only asking them. You say, no, the Quran and the Sunnah proves that that is worship. We should not supplicate or invoke people who have passed away. This is and a totally and a falsehood. So people try nowadays I need to disguise their shirk. Those pagan Arabs, they try to disguise their shirk by their claims and arguments, arguments that they made, that they not worship them except to get close to them, that they should, and they should and those societies should get them closer to Allah, or they will be their intercessors. And these same things are present I need today, those claims and those arguments. And people try to disguise those and his shirk with those things. But in reality, it's not what you call it. It's reality what that thing is in itself. You need to study that thing in itself and turn to the evidences and to find clarity regarding those things. So those pagan Arabs were they excused. They believed in Allah, that He's the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of all of the affairs. And they worship deities besides Allah. Were they excused because they believed that Allah is the creator himself alone? And they were not excused. They were not excused for that. And no one really excused any for this as well, any for shirk, for major shirk that they committed.
and their intercession that they sought from those false deities, and it didn't benefit them. They were seeking some benefit from them, isn't it? For them to speak to Allah and on their behalf raise their request. But did that benefit them? No. It was major shirk and made them polyethist. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to call them to the true tawheed and to fight them as well. And then, and in the next part of the treaties, the author mentions, وَالشَّفَاعَةُ شَفَاعَتَانِ شَفَاعَةٌ مَنْفِيَةٌ وَشَفَاعَةٌ مُثْبَتَةٌ So the intercession is of two types. Intercession that is negated and intercession that is affirmed. So there's a type of intercession that is negated. Negated, prohibited and invalid. And there is a type of intercession that is affirmed. It is affirmed by the Qur'an and the Sunnah. So the first is negated by the Qur'an and the second is affirmed by the Qur'an. This is and from the evidences. But polytheists, they believe that intercession is open. It's not restricted. They believe that they could go, they can go to there and the righteous people who passed away and ask them to intercede and on their behalf. They think it's open, it's not restricted. But in reality, it is restricted. That is the type of intercession that is negated and prohibited and invalid. Negated by the Quran, and there is that type which is affirmed by the Quran. And the evidence for the one that is the negated, the intercession that is negated, we have from the Quran a verse that the author brings. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمٌ لَا بَيْعٌ فِيهِ وَلَا خُلَّةٌ وَلَا شَفَاعَةٌ وَالْكَافِرُونَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, spend from that which we have provided for you before there comes a day when there will be no bay, there will be no transaction, bargaining, we know, and no bargaining. Wala khulla, no friendship. Wala shafa'a, and no intercession. And no intercession. So this proves that there is a type of intercession that is negated. So that intercession that is negated, the author, and he brought a definition from for that. And the intercession, he says, "Ma kana tutlabu min ghairi Allahi fi ma la yaqdiru alayhi illa Allah." The negated intercession is that which is sought from other than Allah regarding the matters that none is able to do except Allah. It's a definition. The negated intercession is that which is sought from other than Allah. And regarding the matters which no one, which nothing, has ability to do except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he gave a definition for the intercession that is affirmed. And he said, وَالشَّفَاعَةُ الْمُثْبَتَةُ هِيَ أَلَّتِي تُطْلَبُ مِنَ اللَّهِ It is the intercession that is sought from Allah. It is the intercession that is sought from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he says, وَالشَّافِعُ مُخْرَمٌ بِالشَّفَاعَةِ And the one who is given the, the permission to intercede is honored by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and with that intercession. وَالْمَشْفُوعُ لَهُ مَنْ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَهُ وَعَمَلَهُ بَعْدَ الْإِذْنِ And the one who is being interceded for? And the person who is being interceded for, he, what is though his attributes? What does his attributes must be? Is man radiyallahu qawlahu wa amalahu ba'd al idhn Is one that Allah is pleased with his statements and his actions after Allah gives permission for the intercession to take place. Allah Azza wa Jal, must be pleased with his statements and his actions 
And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives permission for the intercession to take place. كَمَا قَالَ تَعَالَى مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Who will intercede before him except by his permission? So in this verse as well, it proves there is a type of intercession that is affirmed by the Qur'an. In this verse, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Who will intercede before him except by his permission? With Allah Azza wa Jal, we give permission and those who give permission to will intercede on behalf any of, of those any people. So that which is negated any by the Quran is the intercession that is performed and done without Allah's permission. So there'll be no intercession without Allah's Allah's permission and the day of judgment. And no one will intercede for anyone except that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given permission for that intercession to take place. And this is the case of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. On the day of judgment, uh, he will prostrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That will be the time when there will be calamity, difficulty, great difficulty upon the people on the day of judgment. The time when he comes, they won't be able to bear. And on that day, it be difficult for them. And the Prophet ﷺ will bow down to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate to him. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will command his messenger to rise and to intercede on behalf of the monotheists, the Muslims. And also there's intercession, the intercession that he will do and it generally for everyone to lift that calamity and difficulty from them. So even Awfad Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he will require Allah's permission on that day before he can intercede. No one will intercede without the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the, also, the intercession that is done on behalf on a, of a person and who ascribe partners to Allah, that is negated as well. So a person who is a mushrik, there will be no intercession and he for him. This is negated in the Quran. Because Allah Azza wa Jal is not pleased with those person, with those people. And we said one of the conditions that Allah Azza wa Jal must be pleased with his statements and actions. And a person who has worshipped false deities besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah azza wa jal is not pleased and he with him. So there's no intercession before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala regarding those and the people. And also the intercession that is sought from the deceased, and it is people who have passed away, who their, their actions have ceased, they've gone to the next life, this intercession is negated because those people cannot carry out those requests. This is just an extreme belief that some of the pagan Arabs had and some of those, and of the people nowadays as well, and some of those who ascribe themselves and to Islam. And all of these is negated. It is prohibited and is invalid. And also, no one who is a a mushrik himself will be able to intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not pleased with the mushrikeen. He will not intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the way if a person wants to seek intercession, they seek it directly from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And you ask Allah to make you from those that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede on their behalf on the day of judgment. This is how I need you seek intercession. Seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Make, ask Allah azza wa jal to make you from those that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will seek intercession on their behalf on the day of judgment. So worship Allah azza wa jal and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And do not ask those who cannot benefit you regarding this matter. And also a very important point is make sure that you are monotheist. Make sure that you are not ascribing partners to Allah. That you die as a Muslim upon Tawheed. 
If that happens, then automatic, automatically you'll be from those who the Prophet ﷺ will intercede on their behalf on the Day of Judgment because he will not intercede on behalf of, of Mushrikeen. He will not intercede on behalf of those who have worshipped others besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And his intercession, when he will intercede, he will intercede before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take the Muslims who are, and he was sinners, from the hellfire and to grant them and to put them into paradise. This is one of the intercession that our Prophet ﷺ will perform on the Day of Judgment. He asks Allah also to put <coughs> the Muslims and in Jannah, those true and pure monotheists. And even though a person might be a sinner, and a sinner in the dunya, as long as he has not fallen into major shirk, worshipped others besides Allah, the Prophet ﷺ will intercede on their behalf. That's the case. Even that's, and he, the Prophet ﷺ will intercede on their behalf. So what is upon us, what is upon the Muslims, is to ask intercession from Allah Azza wa Jal, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes them from those that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will intercede on their behalf of the Day of Judgment. And ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make you firm upon your deen, that you die as Muslims, to protect you from shirk. And this is the things that we should ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not by going to the grave or to righteous people who have passed away, and supplicate to them or sacrifice an animal for them or make oaths by them. And ila khirihi, furthermore, people do for those and the righteous people that they claim. This is not the way. But turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his aid and for his help to make you firm upon tawheed. Now, Condition, the, uh, the intercession that is affirmed has to meet two conditions. The, condition, the intercession that is affirmed has to meet two conditions. First, as we said, Allah's permission. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to give permission for intercession to, to be and he performed. And we mentioned the verse, Allah azza wa jalla says, مَنْ ذَا الَّذِي يَشْفَعُ عِنْدَهُ إِلَّا بِإِذْنِ Who can intercede before him except by his permission, except by his permission. So no one will intercede except by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also, another condition is the person who is being interceded, interceded for, and he must be a monotheist. He must be a muwahid, a person who worships Allah azza wa jal alone as I affirmed, and he tawheed, and he completely and this is the category of people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pleased with. And the evidence for this is وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنِ ارْتَضَى وَلَا يَشْفَعُونَ إِلَّا لِمَنِ ارْتَضَى And they will not intercede except for him with whom Allah is pleased. They will not intercede and they cannot intercede except for him with whom Allah is pleased. So, there will be no intercession for the, the mushrikun on, on the day of judgment. Uh, we have a hadith from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that states, he said, that the one who has more right to my intercession on the day of judgment is the one who says, La ilaha illallah sincerely from his heart. One who said, La ilaha illallah sincerely from his heart. La ilaha illallah, that there is no deity worthy of worship except Allah. Sincerely from his heart, he truly believed in that statement. And he applied and in that statement. This is from sincerity. Sincerity is not meaning that we say that this is what in our hearts, but then our actions contradict it. No, but sincerely from his heart, that this is what he has applied. <coughs> he has worshipped none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We'll end here, inshallah. وقولوا قولي هذا واستغفروا لي ولكم من كل ذنب واستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.